everybody. Hey boys and girls, boys and girls. Hey babies and boys, so it's me, I'm at work. You want to hang out with me today as we do a day in life as an office contact. I'm actually about to go and get a patient right now, so I'm whispering because they're doing a test in the next room, so we're going to just hang out today while I go to work. If y'all want any more videos like this, Make sure you comment and like and all that different stuff. But yeah, this is my scrubs. I wear blue at my hospital, so we don't have to, but you know. So let's hang out today. two patients so far today I got in at about 3 I'm I'm here until like 1 30 so right now I'm just eating my little public sub I have my brisk over here I've been snacking I've been snacking since I got here but yeah work is not so bad today I will update you guys later on if anything pops off but right now I'm updating my Amazon list. I'm slowly getting the inspiration back to get my stuff together. I might make another productive routine, but for now I'm organizing my list because I have been super quiet about it. Lash business is going under a new name and with me being in esthetician school, I'm trying to organize everything so I can actually rebrand, like open up everything under the same name. So with all that, I'm like, looking up inventory, looking up prices, organizing everything. I'm adding more to my Amazon store and I'm gonna be adding products and stuff like that so you guys can basically access what I use, the vitamins I use, the skincare products I use, all that different stuff. So until then, um, 
I'm just gonna be sitting here enjoying the downtime, reading a little bit. If you guys are curious as to what I'm reading, I'm reading, well, this is my third time reading it. It's Grotesque by Natsuo Kirino. It's a very good book if you are familiar with the work of Out. This is basically the same author. I like this book. I heard the Japanese version goes into detail where the English version kind of omits stuff but it's really good. I've been watching my girl Brianna Kwan on YouTube who really talks about productivity, organization, studying, wellness, all that good stuff and she's actually it's actually got me into the habit of annotating my work and just you know really getting into the the reading without me feeling like I'm just looking at words and getting through chapters and not really knowing what's going on so she's really been a she's really been a gem as far as organization and just getting that productivity back in me because you know when we work and all that different stuff like we kind of fall into a routine and you guys know I'm not one for routine like I get frustrated when I don't give space to my creativity when I don't give space to my creative endeavors whatever the case might be so yeah she's been teaching me how to annotate well not teaching me but she mentions annotating the work and you know going back on what you read and all that different stuff so that's what i've been doing like right here you see that i've like highlighted certain lines in the book because to me it kind of just gives the gist of what's going on without all the fluff in between um on this chapter i'm on page 270 and it's basically giving, I don't want to spoil the book too much, but it's giving basically a different perspective of the, the quote unquote antagonist of the book. And I started to highlight different things that he said because I wanted to get another look at his character development. So different things that he mentioned and just like his development and his perspective of things, especially like during this time, this was like, 70s 80s japan and a lot and during that time like a lot of chinese immigrants were coming over to japan for work before the bubble economy so you know this was just his life in china like rural china and how he was trying to get over to japan and not even to spoil it too much but homeboy had a weird affiliation with like his younger sister i think he was low-key in love with his sister but anyway this is where i'm at so far and this is good to keep track because if i lose like my spot because of a bookmark i have like the sections that i've highlighted so yeah that's what we're doing right now in the midst of everything you even see here like i don't think you japanese can ever really understand this feeling and you are fortunate as a result like that's giving very like i hate y'all but I want to read the book a little bit more before I get my final thoughts on the character. nothing really going on right now so I'm gonna show y'all some of the stuff that uh, we use on an everyday basis what I like what we usually use on an everyday basis like me as an as an I was gonna say a lash tech oh look at me manifesting <laughs> as me as an ultrasound tech and what we use on a on a regular basis and I'll go through some of the probes and stuff we use and stuff like that so let's turn this camera around I said don't have any cleansing solution on them we use these for more so the transvaginal wipes. They are cotton. See, no liquid, no residue, no nothing. You use these after you use the transvaginal probe and before you put them in this Trophon machine over here, before you put them in the Trophon machine right here, you cleanse them with a with one of these to prevent any like, you know, nasty stuff on it or whatever. And you can use these after to clean any cleaning solution and then you put it in the little plastic here you have some wipes this is germicide this is the one with the bleach i know 
if you're not familiar and when you're in the hospital like they they call the wipes out the wipes off they call the wipes out by the color so you have the gray top wipes orange top purple top which is not here but you have the orange purple gray red whatever so at my hospital the orange top wipes are the ones with bleach the gray top wipes are the one with alcohol and the purple top wipes are the ones with a carcinogenic fluid on it so i wouldn't use i wouldn't use your hands on that one you you can use these on the probes in the bed you can use these on the bed i wouldn't necessarily use them on the wipes some places say you can but i wouldn't these you can use on the trophon wipes only here you have gel just some gel that we put on the probes nothing too fancy me personally i know some people grab one girl i grab four and sometimes the warmers don't work so y'all don't get mad at the ultrasound text when we have like cold gel on y'all we really do be putting it in a warmer over here the machine is off right now but we're going to talk about the probes so here you have the hc3 these you can use like on very very superficial surfaces some people say you can use these on like newborns neonatals whatever but i personally i'm not that vested or i'm not that experienced with neonatal exams so i can't even tell you but i know when you do like neonatal head spine stuff like that yeah use a much much smaller probe so you use this one you use the eight when it comes to like testicular exams here you have the six which we call the curve um, you use that one for like abdomen to look at very deep surfaces so we like to use these they say ideally you use these on like um, obese patients this is good on this is very very good on thin patients but you can use this on obese patients um, it's really really good on thin patients you use these to look at like the abdomen the liver the kidney the pancreas the spleen yada 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 and you can also use this to look at like the uterus the ovaries um, me personally I like to look at the ovaries with this one we call it a nine this one is used for like thyroid these i like to see if i can find the ovaries if they're more superficial or sitting on the top versus a little bit deeper on the skin surface so i like to use the nine to try to find the ovaries if i can't find the ovaries with the nine i'll use the six and we have another one where you can look at the neonatal head it's like this like i kid you not like this big so those are those let me show y'all the Trophon. This is trash, this is the laundry, and these are the other probe. Transvaginal probe, we use these to do the internal exam, so we use those like to check babies, to check on like, you know, do transvaginal exams, but they wanna like check to make sure that there's no torsion or no bleeding or yada, yada, yada that's the one that we use so right now it's really it's really nothing going on um i've been here i've been working since thursday so right now i'm super thankful that it's like a chill day because i have school tomorrow and stuff so right now we're just enjoying the downtime but i wanted to show y'all a little bit of what we do i may or may not like explain more when it comes to like ultrasound stuff but if you guys have any questions or whatever let me know in the comments and i'll get back to you if i get enough of the same comments i'll just make another video but in the meantime i think that pretty much is going to be my day if we do have if we do have anything else i will talk to y'all about it on my way home but i think i think honestly that's it like that's pretty much the gist of my day. The last patient, like the first patient y'all saw me do, they were portable. When you go portable, you have to pack up. You have to pack up with like a towel and gel and all of that different stuff. And sometimes when you have to do a transvaginal, you have to tape one of these bad boys. You tape one of these and then you put like a sheet and then you put the transvaginal probe and then you cover it with another sheet 
And when you do the transvaginals, oh God, this under you, this old big boy. So we have to put this under you. I might hold this for the like thumbnail. Oh, not that close. I've been working for four days straight and I am exhausted. I hope my check looks figgity fat. But yeah, I think that's it. If you guys have any questions or whatever, let me know in the comments. This video is not over yet, but if y'all have any curiosities along the way, let me know and I'll check back in with y'all later. Bye. I know I told y'all that I was gonna do a, uh, fuck, and I left my tripod again, but I was gonna catch up with y'all after I came home from work, but I was just so tired and it was Sunday. I had school on Monday, so <laughs> I just I just went home and I went to sleep. Like I took a shower and stuff and I went to sleep. But just to summarize that day, I think I had a total of like five or six patients. I'm not that girl to go into detail of like every pathology that I saw because like HIPAA, but the exams, most of the exams I had that day was like gallbladder ultrasounds, abdomen ultrasounds. There's two different types of abdomen ultrasounds. One where the doctor just wants to look at the right upper quadrant and another where they wanna look at the left kidney and the spleen. If it's a left kidney and a spleen, they call it an abdomen complete, but if they just wanna look at the right upper quadrant, depending on the hospital that you work at, you may have to look at the right kidney, you may not. It, it's weird like that, trust me. So, we had those, I had transvaginals. Basically, transvaginals is inside the, the vagina, and that's basically to rule out any free fluid that could be floating what they call the right and left at nexa area basically the right and left at nexa area is that area outside the perimeter of your right and left iliacs so a lot of free fluids sometimes from the kidney or the or if someone has or if someone has metastasis of the liver sometimes it does travel all the way down to the to the to the right and left anexa and sometimes it floats around from the kidney going down into the right and left anexa so basically what i did with the transvaginals was rule out fibroids uh, ovarian cysts leomyomas which is like fatty growth tissue uh adenomas which is growth tissue anything with like oma in it usually i believe is growth i have to look at my medical terminology books but um anything with like oma it's growth or like tissue tissue overlay tissue growth whatever you want to call it if it's if it if that term is in fact incorrect i will leave like a definition here but yeah majority of my day was transvaginals it was abdomens gallbladders pretty basic stuff i went to labor and delivery like once and i know a lot of people are like oh ultrasound babies but really it depends on the day because some days i will go down to labor and delivery and some days i'm just doing a basic anatomy scan to see if the person is even pregnant so it's not just oh babies 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 unless you work in like an ob clinic where it is just babies 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 and then you have the high the high risk maternal fetal medicine which is babies babies but you run in, across a lot of like pathology so my could my salute to the girls who work in high-risk maternal fetal medicine medicine because yes sometimes I do scan people who do have non-living babies inside of them and then they have to do a dilation and cut cuterage which is like cutterage which is basically a DNC which is where they cut the lining of your uterine tissue to actually promote a an abortion so when I do have patients that do have like um, inviolable life inside of their uterus which is what they call like an unliving baby in the medical world when they have an unviable fetus within their uterus you know i'm the one that sees that i'm the one that rules it out i'm the one that writes the report that's usually what i do but it's not all the time babies 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 so yeah but overall that day wasn't bad i'm actually on my way back 
to what you call it. I'm actually on my way back to esthetician school because I got my period. I got my period and because I have fibroids, I told you guys in another video I have two fibroids. So my period is very weird, like not to get super into it or anything, but my period is very weird. Like I guesstimate uh like three, four days when it really when it really starts coming on you know you have spotting or whatever but I guesstimate three four days of when it should start actually coming on you know so my guesstimate was wrong and so I had a like a big wave of back pain which if you don't know if you have if you're having your period oftentimes you you can not everybody but oftentimes you can get free fluid in the posterior cul-de-sac of your uterus, which is located in your lower back. So if you, are, if you are experiencing back pain, it may be a possibility that it's free fluid. Now free fluid isn't as scary as a lot of people think it is. An excessive amount of free fluid, yes, that's scary, but there's certain levels of, of free fluid that the doctor has to determine if it's severe or if it's just physiological or if it's just something that it's there because of your period or you know it's there because you in a, a cyst on your ovary just ruptured or you know it's it's different things that make the free fluid but you don't want to just have random ass free fluid hanging out in your in your like pelvic area that's not good so yeah so I had this massive wave of back pain and you know at first I was just like oh whatever like posture all that good shit but then like I went to the bathroom and I was like oh shit um, my guesstimate was wrong my period is on for real for real so I went home luckily where my school is at it's not that far for me to get to my house and I'm trying to hurry up the video because, you know, I'm getting close to the school and I don't need nobody to figure out where it is. I'm been freshened up or whatever, loved on my dog a little bit, and now I'm on my way back. I'm a little late from break, but I wasn't going to sit there um, bloody, Miss Mamas. That just wasn't going to be the gish, <laughs> the gish of the day. So, yeah, right now I'm going home. Not going home, right? I wish I was going home. But right now I'm going back to the school. I'm going to practice doing nails uh, I keep saying that I'm in esthetician school because ideally that's what I want to do but in reality I'm in full specialist I'm in the full specialist program so I'm learning how to do nails and skin so right now I'm in the nails portion of the program and I actually think it's really cool now where I would place that in my business I don't know because like I said I'm in I'm in beauty school essentially because I want to get my license out the way so I can legitimize my business of doing lashes. Like even now, I have not touched a client since I started school because it's illegal. I'm just trying to see where I want to put this. I've honestly had this like package idea in my head for a while, which I want to refine my craft with doing nails. And that will essentially be included in the package that's been on my noggin. So, yeah, we're going to see where it goes. But right now, I'm just on my way back. I'm like 20 minutes late for my break. But it is what it is in the name of self-care. I still have to record my video from like the first week that I was in esthetician school. Girl, life has been lifing. Like... I haven't been in school since 2018 and just the routine of it all and life like oh but anyway we'll catch up on that another day I might do a chit chat and get you guys caught up on what's been going on I started doing makeup on other people it's 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 a big old movement like I didn't just disappear depressed nowhere I've actually been doing stuff but yeah I'm on my way back I am going to start filming content like me practicing on the nails or whatever and then when I start actually doing clients for my facials I'm definitely going to film that because you know your business can't thrive without content anymore so now we have to get in the habit of filming so much so yeah that is it for my day as a sonographer I hope you guys liked it don't forget to like comment and subscribe 
if you want more videos like that let me know keep in mind that i don't film while i scan patients i won't go over pathology with you guys um from exams i'll give a brief summary of what i did but i won't show pictures right now i have to communicate with a few other content creators i know who actually do like medical content creation so i have to like sit down with them and and get the the yes and the no's of what to do and what not to do so right now i'm not doing it but if you guys want more content like this let me know like comment and subscribe let me know any suggestions that you have miss girl and i will write it down i'm thinking about opening opening up a google docs so you guys can just drop suggestions and i'll check it every week and i'll just write I'll write down what is interesting and whatnot. But yeah, I am going into school. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I hope you guys have a great weekend, week, day, night, whenever you see this video. Bye.